Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the patch notes. I'm not going to read the patch notes, the particular bug fixes, but what I wanna do is actually read the developer notes, which is the underlying reason for them making these changes. And then you're going to see where the game is coming from. So the developers are taking their feedback from the community and they're fixing their game. I know I have not been as critical as I could be at the development team, but I'm taking a different approach to meting out my own opinions because I know this is a tough time for a lot of people. And I'm getting all these flack and all these comments, but eh, it is what it is. People can disagree, but I hope the community remembers when I gave the game a six out of 10 for the progression bug, I also got flack for that. So it's kind of like you're doomed if you do and you're doomed if you don't with the community and everything. So what I do is I go ahead and I share my opinion nonetheless and whatever way it waves, you know, we still remain division players is how I see it. So let's read the developer notes and we'll talk about that over the course of this video. So the game was tuned in a way, according to the developers, that playing the exact same enemy composition at higher difficulties and higher player counts would match to the expected gear of that difficulty and extra players added. However, since the game also adds more elites and veterans to accommodate higher difficulty and player counts, this caused tuning to overcompensate health and damage higher than intended, where thus lowering many of these values. So, they want to go ahead and do the following in regard to the changes that they wish to make. So they want to reduce NPC damage outputs for all difficulties. Enemies melt fast. They, this applies to all NPCs and activities. Enemies will do less damage to players compared to their current damage output. Reduce NPC health and armor for group scaling. Enemy health and armor scaling for two to three and three to four player groups based on veterancy. This means red veteran elite and named enemies will have their health and armor reduced compared to their current values. Additionally, we're adjusting health and armor based on activity difficulty. This applies to hard and challenging difficulties where enemies will have lower health and armor compared to their current values. An exception to heroic and legendary difficulty enemies which will have health and armor increased to compensate for the group scaling reductions to their values. So heroic and legendary difficulty is still going to be very difficult. And they've actually said this. I think they said this in the last state of the game that they did before everybody had to go on, you know, stay the stay home um, mandates or the stay home advisory. So this is coming in this patch right now. I think the, the, the community you know, kind of got in a tizzy as to when it will come. And I think their their fault was not providing a window and a timeline to bring these changes. That's usually, uh, you know, developers are just not PR people in the best sense sometimes. And so we see things like this. Another developer note that's, that shows up here is, we still intend heroic and legendary to be very challenging. Therefore, we're increasing the base difficulty to account for the health reductions for co-op scaling. Compared to now, this means heroic and legendary will be a bit harder for solo players and two-player groups. Three-player difficulty will stay roughly the same and four-player difficulty will be easier. So if you were already having problems with legendary missions and heroic content, you're still going to find that there is a struggle on how to deal with them. But as a solo player, there are ways to still continue because solo players are still playing. But the only thing is there's going to be a slight difficulty for solo gameplay. But let us not freak out. There are probably going to be things that are able to mitigate this kind of play if you want to play solo on heroic and two player groups. I think people started running missions in two player groups. And here we go again with the developers taking a heavy handed approach to deal with and nerf things or to scale things that favor players to have fun. And I hope that they do this in a sensible way and make players actually stronger to compensate for this in a way that doesn't discourage solo players and two man groups or, you know, uh, to kind of push them out of the game because this is probably the direction that this can take. But I think there are other things that we can actually try to, you know, speak about to solve for these things, but we'll talk about it here in a little bit. Now, Black Tusk specific adjustments, which went live earlier last week, which reduced the health of Warhounds, reduced the damage of the Warhound Sniper, reduced the damage of the 360 spin on Warhound Minigun, increased the intention icon during the 360 spin from Warhound Miniguns to give players more time to react, reduced weak point, uh, health of Warhound Grenadier's control unit, support station, 
base uh, reduced base health of support station, uh, adjusted health scaling of support station with veterans ease, increased likelihood of support stations being deployed in the open away from cover. EMP effects will now damage the support station. So these things are being worked on and the devs want to bring the game to a place where players still have fun playing it. Yes, the past difficulty was for those people like me who enjoy very difficult content. And I know some people say, uh, I, I, hear, I hear two different uh, vari variations uh, in the assumptions that people have about how much time I spend and how I play the game. There's a school of thought that think I play the game as a hardcore player and I have a hardcore team of sweats that we live in our mommy's basement and we play every day and we grind. I'm not saying anything against the sweaty players. I mean, I know you're sweaty and stuff, but I'm not, you know, I'm not dogging on you. I'm just saying there are people who think that's all I do. Then I have another school of thought of people who think I don't play this game at all. And I just make videos because I don't play as much as they do. Honestly, I like the <laughs> I like the false assumptions both ways because, you know, I don't feel like I, I just laugh at them because it's really interesting to see how players think uh, about, you know, another player when you put your opinions out there. But maybe in time, you'll know how I play the game. Maybe in time you won't. But I'll leave that for a separate conversation. Uh, level 30, World Tier 1 to World Tier 5 content, NPC damage, health, and armor receive additional reductions. And then pre-Warlords of New York, content has lower maximum values to weapon damage, skill, and armor than level 31 plus content. So difficulty is now tuned separately for pre-expansion World Tier content. And then PvP balance, all weapon damage uh, in PvP is negative 20%. PvP rifles, an additional negative 10%. And then MMR is an additional negative 10%. Cluster Seeker Mines are going to be uh, reduced their distance. Their distance is going to be reduced to charge from 12 to 10 meters. Reduced distance for them to expo explode from 6 meters to 4 meters. Blah, 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 blah. Developers know these changes to make the cluster mine feel a bit more responsive. And then a lot more bug fixes about leagues, manhunts. If you... One of them that really affected me was I actually have a second account for many of you that may not know. Uh, and I've leveled up to level 40 and I'm playing solo so that I can actually make a solo player video that works for solo players with having the experience to back it up. And I was going to level up my season, my um, do my uh, what you call it, my field research to get my other specializations. But they're not working like I'm damaging the NPCs and doing the requirements, but it's not it's not accounting that for me. So I got frustrated and bought the season pass again for the second time on the season one year one season pass. So I could just start leveling up my specializations and that still is not even working. So they're actually uh, going to be dealing with that right now. I think it says fixed an issue where specializations do not unlock while owning the ultimate edition or having purchased the year one bundle. So that's something that affected me because I've already done that on my main account. Um, even technician, um, I don't have it on my main character, but on my second character, I went ahead and leveled that up and leveling specializations can be quite the chore because you want your build to be well, but I'm willing to still go in there and level them up anyways. It's just, I don't want to deal with the research stuff right now. I never got to deal with it unless I needed the items they were giving and I don't want to deal with it later down the road. So look through the patch notes. I'll leave a, I'll leave a comment as a comment. I'll leave a link in the comment section below. Um, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot more faith in this development team, uh, seeing that they're learning, seeing that they're going through a lot right now. I just want to be somebody that supports them. I could be on the other side, kicking them down now that things are, you know, you know, not going well, but I've make, I've made this decision and I know it's not popular. I know many people are, you know, aghast or how do you say it? Uh, exasperated. There's these big words in there. There's some, some, some five cent words in there. And I know the community as a whole has a lot of mixed feelings, but I've decided to take a positive stance in this season and it may rub off wrong at members of the community, but I've also said, feel free to disagree with me. Uh, I've even had names, name people calling me names, you know, telling me all kinds of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, we can disagree without anybody acting like a, you know, like a little baby. I mean, we're adults here. I can hold an opinion that is starkly in contrast with anybody else. And I understand holding that opinion is going to, you know, throw, you know, dirt my way. But if you want to throw dirt my way and you don't have any way to counter the arguments, I mean, feel free to also go ahead and I might be wrong. I always, always leave room for that possibility 
that I might be wrong in the way I've taken my stance against the game. I even have my my own personal friends comment on my videos telling me that they don't they do not agree with my opinions. So if they are even disagreeing with me and I'm still not going to shift, then you know I really have a reason for doing this. Maybe the reason may not be seen today, maybe the reason may not be seen right now, but I still have a reason for taking the stance that I'm taking currently with the current game. And I know it's broken. They've had four years to fix the game. Hey, you're preaching to the choir. Go watch my old videos when I was talking about how the game was broken. I've said every single thing I feel like the community can say right now. But I'm taking a different turn to see how this plays out. And then we'll see what goes on from here down the road. It's our game. It's our dumper. It's our dumpster fire, according to Jetforth. We're going to have to work through it, or maybe we're going to, you know, resign from playing the game if it becomes a scenario where the devs just cannot hold it together. And I'm open to all kinds of options. So thank you very much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' support nonetheless. I know I'm a knucklehead some days, but you guys still, and this is what you guys deal with. And I know I'm so, I'm, I, I, I just, I apologize in advance, but I'm, I'm about to be a crazy, uh, stubborn child here in the next few weeks. So thank you for bearing with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.